Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I'm in the mood to play with color and alcohol inks. And because I love mixing things up in my lab, I mean my... <laughs> I mean, my studio, oh my gosh, I just said my lab. Oh, oh my gosh, I guess I do think of it as my lab, but I do mean my studio. Okay, I want to try something different. I want to see what it would be like to mix up my own alcohol inks. Not by murdering some Sharpies. I know that some people cut up Sharpies to make alcohol inks. I love my Sharpies. I, I picked one up thinking I was going to do that once, and... I think it started to cry, so I put it back down and left it alone. I just couldn't do it. But I got these dies from Jacquard and thought we should see what these would do. When I like a couple of products from a company, I have a tendency to want to try other things that they make. For example, I love DecoArt's paint and their pouring medium and their stencils. So if they come out with something new, chances are I want to try it. Well, that's how I feel about Jacquard. I love their alcohol ink, love their Pearl X mica powder, and their Lumiere paints a lot. So, I want to know what these are about, since they're made by Jacquard. To start out with, these are a powder, and they are meant to be mixed with water, to dye things that are usually difficult to dye with brilliant color, like wood, acrylic fabrics, plastics, leather, that type of thing. This set has your basic colors. The primaries, the secondaries, a brown and a black. Theoretically, I should be able to mix every hue I want with this set. Now, the packaging says that this gets mixed with really hot water in order to dye fabrics or wood, like you would dunk the wood or fabric into the water. But it also says that to create a paintable mixture that you can mix this with denatured alcohol, which I'm going to skip because that stuff smells horrible, but apparently alcohol is the solvent for this. We have to try. I'm hoping isopropyl works as well. Now, since I have no idea how strong of a dye these are, I have covered my silicone mat with just a cut up grocery bag, just in case this could actually dye the silicone. I doubt it, but you know, better safe than sorry. I've definitely gloved up because alcohol inks stain enough and this is pure dye. I just don't feel like having all different color hands. And I'm also wearing a dust mask, so I hope that my voice isn't too muffled. All right, I'm going to start out with, let's play with the red. Okay, so it's just a powder. I'm gonna take a really teeny tiny amount since I don't know anything about the strength of this. And I'm going to try just a regular 91% isopropyl alcohol. I wish I had 99, but I don't. And I'm just squeezing some in there. And immediately the color obviously reacted. So it definitely dissolves in alcohol. So after mixing, I have a very brilliant red. And I also have sort of like these little grains that don't seem to want to dissolve. I don't know if it's because it's saturated and if I added more alcohol, they would dissolve. I'm going to add a little more alcohol and see if those little granules will dissolve. Well, I couldn't get them to dissolve, so I'm going to try to avoid pouring them into my little bottle. 
I love these little needle tip bottles. And they have the nice little built-in caps. All right, so I'm going to mix up some yellow. I think the yellow is much easier to see. So it looks like this. Same small amount. Now, I have to wonder if denatured alcohol would have dissolved the grains. I don't know. And I really don't even want to know because <laughs> if I have to only use denatured alcohol with this, I don't want to play. Because that stuff doesn't smell pretty at all. And the reason it doesn't smell good is because they purposely add poison to it to keep people from drinking it. And the poison smells, I gotta say, it's a pretty yellow. It's very sunny. Same thing again, I want to avoid putting granules in my bottle. Yeah, it's kind of like this sandy residue at the bottom of the cup. I'm not committing to a heck of a lot of this until I know what it's going to do. I'll mix up a couple more colors and we'll see what we get. Like the purple and the green are so rich. Oh my gosh. I suspect that the blue will be the same. That's probably too much again. Oh no, no that's very blue. That is very blue. I opted for these five colors, yellow, purple, red, green, and blue. I'm thinking that this is probably enough for now to give us a feel for what this can do and if it will work. I also went ahead and cut myself a piece of Doralar, the two-sided matte version of it. That's my favorite. And I taped it to this little elevated glass platform. Since I'm going to be using a blow dryer, this will keep my drawer alarm from blowing away and will also hopefully give me a nice border at the end when I peel off the tape. I chose to work on door alarm because it has a tiny bit of tooth, so it will grab onto the dye just fine without there being any binder in the solution at all. Now, if I wanted to work on a ceramic tile or a piece of glass or a vase or something like that, to ensure that my work stayed on that shiny surface as I was working and didn't get very easily wiped away, what I would do is add Claro Extender to these little bottles. So I would have sort of mixed up my dye with a little bit of alcohol to get it going, and then I would have added Claro Extender. Claro Extender is almost like clear alcohol ink. It's designed to thin alcohol ink and give you longer working time without breaking down alcohol ink's ability to bind and stick to anything because this has binder built in. If you're familiar with acrylic pouring, Think of this as pouring medium for alcohol ink. It will maintain the sheen of your alcohol inks that would ordinarily be dulled if you only thinned with alcohol. So since I only mixed alcohol with these dyes, there won't be any sheen, but I'm fine with that. I can always spray on a sheen later if I want. Alrighty, let's do this. Okay, let's start with some blue. Let's see what happens. Okay, well that was very unexpected. <laughs> hmm, makes me want to try the purple. This is fascinating. What's the yellow gonna do? <laughs> now that's interesting. Now usually yellow and purple do not make green, but in this case, it did. So, uh, let's see, what have we not tried? Red. Okay. I mean, I realize this got mixed up here, but this area here was untouched by any other color. And that's kind of like a, a brown of some sort. This is so odd. Let's try some green. 
screen here. Oh, the I'm gonna go with straight alcohol now. See, look at that. The minute the alcohol brings it back to the blue temporarily. That is so weird. I can't get over how blue that is. I kind of want this blue though. I like, I'm trying to figure out what color I can mix to make this blue happen. <laughs> I don't know. Now, you see, I like this color a lot. I do. I just want the blue. How do I get the blue? That's me. I grabbed my thinned down version of Pinata's Baja Blue. So, that should give me some type of blue here. So. I'm just adding little puddles of alcohol now to see what that'll do. You guys know I don't have a plan, right? Cause I never have plans when I do this kind of thing. This is just me playing and getting a feel for what is possible. I want to bring back some color, so I'm going to put down some ink, for lack of a better word. Okay, this is very different from where we started. <laughs> I'm liking it. I really absolutely adore what's happening in the color here. So I know that this is green. I honestly don't remember <laughs> which color this is. This sort of flowery, petally thing, kind of the green melding into the purple, I think. <laughs> It's really, really cool. That's super, super pretty. The addition of the Baja Blue definitely gave me a blue in here, which I really wanted. I think that if I got used to which color does what, this could be a lot of fun to play with. I would have to label my bottles with like a swatch so that I would know, like if I grab the blue, that I'm really gonna get more of this purpley color. So I think if I do that, this could totally be an interesting set of colors because it's going to let me mix a gazillion different colors. So I'm going to play with this some more. Let's make another piece just to see what happens. But before we do that, let's pull the tape off this one. I love pulling off tape. It always just makes everything look just better. <laughs> it's looking nice. Oh, I lucked out. I think that's pretty cool. I think this will be fun to embellish. So I will play with that for sure. But let's make something else. I want to see if I can do something with this color thing happening over there. So I'm taping my next piece. And if you've never seen any of my other videos where I do this, this is just cheap dollar store tape. I get six rolls of these for a dollar. You can get the holder for a dollar and it works better than blue tape for sealing edges on door lar. This time around, I'm going to start out with a wet surface. And I think <laughs> it was the purple that gave me that color that I ended up liking so much. The reason that I spin my work back and forth so much is to keep little fingers from forming. I don't want little spindlies shooting off. I want sort of more of these rounded edges. And 
by moving the piece, I'm able to keep the flow of air pushing against the alcohol ink. If I shoot the alcohol ink this way, it'll form these little, little finger type things. And I don't want that. So as the wall forms, I turn and push against the wall so that I kind of get more edges like this or like that. So watch as the walls form and I push against them. Yeah, this is the blend. I love that. I'm loving these two colors together. Pretty caramelly color. Yeah, I like it better because the yellow is a little too sunny for it. Let's see what happens if I add green here. It's definitely getting more organic and I am loving that. This is very in keeping with fall. I want to brown this green up a little. If I do that and add a drop of red. It's awesome when you get what you want. <laughs> There's too much here. Just take this down a little. I don't love this line. I think I'm going to stop there. So, this time around, when I pulled off the tape, I had some leaks and I need to clean them up. Now, I tried straight alcohol and it got some of it off, but not all of it because the dyes and most alcohol inks also stain the Duralar. There's a point at which you just can only get so much off. But I wanna try to get down to the white if possible. So, the only thing that I found that really does a great job at that sort of thing um, is if you use the Claro extender, that usually will cut through, but it's going to leave a shiny spot, so I don't like that. But um, Jacquard makes this cleanup solution, which at first I thought, what's the big deal? I mean, it's, what is it, alcohol? I can just get alcohol. But I don't know what's in here, but it is more than alcohol. It, it cuts through almost... <laughs> anything. So I'm hoping it's going to work for this. Very often a lot of this is on the back because it's leaked under. I mean, I know I sound like a Jacquard commercial, but seriously, this stuff really does work. <laughs> and I have to be careful not to get into my actual painting. I don't know anything else that would have done that for me. I've tried blending solution, the Claro extender, 91% uh, alcohol. I don't know if 99 would do it, but this definitely does it. So I am converted, I believe, in the cleanup solution now. <laughs> I imagine that some of you might want these little bottles, so I thought a size comparison might be helpful. This is the size I use today. This is 10 milliliters. Store-bought Alcohol ink bottles are 15 milliliters, so you can see the difference in size. This cleanup solution is in a 30 milliliter bottle. Now this is also a 30 milliliter bottle, it's just taller and longer. And then finally, this is a 50 milliliter bottle. I wanted you to be able to see the difference because you may not be able to visualize that when you're ordering and trying to imagine, well, which size do I need? So this size I think is better for something like acrylic paint. You'd never need this for alcohol ink unless you were doing a mural. I think for alcohol ink, this size will do you, but these other sizes are also available in this needle tip 
point. You'll see them in my Amazon shop and also in the links that I'll put for you in the description box. Because I remain baffled by the color thing, I decided to just drop a couple of drops of the inks that I mixed up onto just a piece of tissue paper. And the purple is purple, the red is red, and the blue is blue. So then it occurred to me that maybe the reason the color is the way it is when I'm blowing it around is because there isn't enough concentration of the color. So what I did then was take a piece of Duralar and then just leave a drop of color alone without blowing it around. And the blue is blue, the red is red, the purple is purple. So <laughs> that is the lesson, boys and girls. <laughs> if you thin your inks very far, you will get other colors. That is the fun of working with dyes. They're very different than pigments that are very sort of stay the course, they are their color, they don't change, because they're just particles suspended in a liquid, as opposed to dyes that dissolve in the solvent, so lots of different things can happen. I think that makes it a lot of fun. When I got into the world of acrylic pouring and sort of painting abstract, Part of the reason I did it was because in my jewelry making and when I draw with colored pencil, I'm so uh, rigid, type A. And I wanted something that would open me up and let me just experiment and not care what happened. And it is very freeing. And I am just loving this whole fluid art world. In the end, I'm intrigued by these dyes. There is a lot more testing to do. I think they could dye resin really well with transparent color. I'm looking forward to trying that. I love the fact that I have the opportunity to mix my own colors and that I have an endless supply of ink in front of me because one of these bottles is gonna go a really long way. I mean, maybe till the end of my life. I'm sure I haven't thought of half the things I can do with them yet. Even these little grains left behind can be something I play up rather than something I avoid. Like I like this little texture going on here. Let me know what ideas popped up for you during this and tell me if you've ever made your own alcohol inks. Have you ever murdered a Sharpie or two? It's okay, you can tell me. <laughs> I won't judge. <laughs> What sorts of things would you do with the dyes? And what are you curious about now? If you find product experiments interesting, let me know with a thumbs up. And if you find this channel of use or value to you, consider joining my Patreon team to help keep this channel going and to get some fun perks for yourself. Head over to patreon.com slash Miriam's Nature to find out more and what those perks are. Remember to join my Facebook group to see what other people are creating with alcohol inks, with resin, acrylic pouring, and more. And to show off what you're creating. Thanks for spending time with me. Go let your creative nature shine. See you next time. Bye now.